I'm Chef Tanya Brandt, and we're here today at beautiful, historic Old Fort Erie. We're in the officer's kitchen, and we're going to be making a fire-roasted rabbit today. And we're going to stuff it with um, some fruits and vegetables, and we're also going to be making a warm Three Sisters salad to go with that. So be sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell for future uploads. So this video is going to be one of a three-part series that we're doing here at the fort so I'm super excited and I definitely want you to check that out if you like what you see here today check out the other parts we're also going to be working with some fish and some turkey and just getting into that mindset of uh, fort life hi Adam well I wanted to learn a little bit today about um, what kind of could be expecting in terms of rations for cooking today well it depends on what rank you are oh well, I don't have a rank. Um, I'm just wondering about who maybe I would be cooking for. Well, mostly the officers. Uh, soldiers don't get a cook. They get a fire pit. I heard kind of what the typical soldier rations would be. What do they do for officers? Officers, it's they're pretty much buying their own. They're giving the same food really for the soldiers, but it's so gross that They've got money, so they're buying their own. You know, fresh fruits and vegetables they can grow locally. Um, any game that they could hunt or have hunted for them that they can purchase. Uh, there's reports of officers even trying to grow watermelons here. Uh, oh, so wow. anything from, you know, corn, beans, tomatoes to, to watermelons. So they definitely had a garden, like, on the oh, fort side? Yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. There's quite a large garden here historically that would have been properly maintained. And it was offered to the soldiers. But it, again, it becomes problematic because they're essentially given the dirt in the ground. Um, so they're expected to buy the seeds and buy the tools, which means that at the end of the day, when the regular soldiers only make it around 20 cents a day in the British Army or eight bucks a month, it's not always something they can afford to do. There's almost an unwritten rule as the cook. Um, you're making the meals in the kitchen. You're sending it to the officer's quarters. Of course, when it's done, collecting the leftovers, just bringing it back to the kitchen for dishes and stuff, and essentially to throw out the leftovers. There's not really too many ways to preserve cooked food yeah. uh, during this time period, but if you always made a little bit extra, uh, you know, on accident, you yeah. could maybe secure some extra food uh, that you could give away to yourself as the cook, but also maybe some of your friends if you wanted to be well-liked in the garrison. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I thank you for uh, sharing a little bit of fort life with yeah, me. You're and, welcome. Uh, <laughs> And just think this room's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> So here's our little rabbit we have here. And you can see it's all clean. The guts were inside, I took them out for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna spice it a little bit. And then we're going to put um, some peaches in there. I figure it's peach season, we're in Niagara. Um, so what better than to use peaches and we're also gonna put some apple in there as well. Um, so I'll get those and we'll get that started. And then we're gonna season the rabbit. Okay, so. I'm just taking this. I'm probably only going to just like quarter it because you don't. You do want big chunks because you don't want it to fall out of the rabbit over the fire or anything. Um, you probably could just throw it in there whole. I'm just going to leave that one half like that. Um, it's not too big, so I'll just use half of this onion. And for the rub today that I'm going to put on the rabbit, I have um, some stinging nettle. I'm just going to put in there because it looks nice. <laughs> and it's really nutritious for you. I also have um, some wild leek, so it's just like powdered wild leeks, uh, powdered wild onion salt, and I also have a smoked cedar salt, so that's gonna help with the smokiness and all that. We're gonna get that on the, on the rabbit. So you can see those are just a couple of rough chops and an apple. And then we're going to um, put this inside of the rabbit. Okay, so you'll see the cavity is not very big. Really, that all that's holding it in is mostly just going to be this thin skin layer. So when we're cooking it over the fire, the meat's kind of here at the tail end of the back, and then the thighs, and then the front there. So we're trying to get some of that, some essence in there. All right, so I'm going to cut some twine, and we're going to try and thread this together a bit. 
I was gonna try and thread it together. I might have to wrap it around because it is, like I said, it is fairly thin, so. Okay. Officers at the time, they would have to get permission even to go out and find a, a protein like this. And one of the things that they did do was, um, most of the indigenous people didn't, um, they didn't live on the for in the fort, right? They lived, chose to live outside of the fort, and one of those reasons being was that they had families and more access to things that they were familiar with. Um, it was really um, a tough time, <laughs> I guess you would say, living here. Rations were pr fairly rare. Um, a lot of it was just living on stew and beef, a little bit of bread. Um, so it wasn't, <laughs> it definitely wasn't glamorous. <laughs> So having indigenous allies outside of the fort did help them that where they could trade. So for the powdered wild onion, I added salt to it. Um, I did it at home, we just hung them to dry. And once they were all nice and dry, um, I just pulverized it with some, um, with some salt as well. And I just put it into a mixer. You can use a mortar and pestle, um, just whatever way you're gonna be able to break it up. The leek salt was actually a gift. I do make my own leek salt, but I brought um, my gift because it was in this cute little container here. <laughs> That's from Dynamite Farms, actually in Michigan, and they do have an uh, Instagram and website um, where you can order it from. And it's a really great product. It's actually a lot finer than the one I make, so they do he does make a, a really great product. So what we're doing here is just sewing up the cavity because we want to try and keep our contents in there. And you can see we did spice it a little bit. Um, and we're gonna do the outside as well. Um, really, when we're cooking this over the fire, um, we're doing it just to get that smoky flavor. You really wanna add that. And one of the common things being here is that this is the officer's kitchen, and the officer's kitchen um, didn't prepare anything for the soldiers. The soldiers actually were in charge of cooking their own meals. Over the fire where we're gonna cook the rabbit, that's where you'll see where the soldiers would've pulled their rations together and would've made um, a dinner, which like I said, usually is about 100% of the time was just a stew. So what we want to do today is work with some of the ingredients that they would have had in and around that time and, you know, just make them in another way and play with it. And unfortunately, they wouldn't have been able to eat this good, but <laughs> maybe the officers were. <laughs> and you see that's just going to make it nice and tight to kind of keep our contents in there. So when you're cooking with rabbit, it is a really lean protein. It's definitely a healthy protein and a healthy option. It is a traditional food for indigenous people. And um, yeah, it's really light. You see, there's not too much meat. Like really your meat is gonna be like the thighs and stuff on the, on the rabbit. Um, and they can be finicky. Um, so that's why you see a lot of rabbit stews and things, not really polished dishes made with pieces of, of rabbit because um, like I said, it's pretty thin on some parts. Okay, but they're definitely plenty full, they're everywhere, and would have been something very good to um, supplement, supplement our meals with and, and just to have that protein in our diet. And it is a really good lean protein. It's really light meat. Um, you'll see it's not very dark. It's um, kind of like the color of, of chicken. Um, it does have a slightly different taste, but it's not too gamey, so it is good for some people. Like they just, they're not into like game meats or the, the flavor. Um, rabbit is a good option for that. So, so you can see his little belly kind of sewed up. Um, the way we're hanging it over the fire, the heat won't hit it too hard. So um, you don't have to worry about those strings burning and stuff. I'm just gonna sprinkle some more of our, this is stinging nettle that I'm putting on here. Um, it is super nutritious. It doesn't do a ton in the way of flavor. Um, so I use it for the nutritional value and also it's kind of like this indigenous um, parsley that you can put on stuff that it, it just, it looks nice and gives you a nice product. So I like to work that in. Um, the wild onion is exactly what it is. It definitely tastes like onions. It smells just like a, um, a regular onion powder. Um, the cedar smoke salt too as well. I'm just adding that so to help with the smoky flavor. This just goes along with uh, what we're doing today. I'm gonna flip that over and get his back. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie it in two places in the front and the back. The one that's closer to the top is really, it's just gonna be for um, something to hold for while we hang it. So it's gonna be underneath his arms here. So 
this was just kind of more reassurance, reassurance um, and just making sure that the legs kind of stay together and the contents stay in there. And then you'll see once we put it over the fire, we're going to add another string and it's going to hang. And ideally, they kind of rotisserie on their own, but you know, you kind of come along and give them a little spin and, and then he's going to hang by the fire like this. <laughs> and we'll see how long that takes us. <laughs> a side dish that's gonna go with our roasted rabbit so one thing I got is a little bit of the roasted corn that we did so this is gonna be like a sauteed warm salad type of dish and I want to put some of these concords in there just because I love the sweetness and it actually goes really well with the rabbit meat so I definitely want to get some of those in there to blister them up a bit okay um, I have some of my green beans left over so I'm just gonna chop those in half and throw them in Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of scallion in there because this is gonna be a quick saute it off. I don't wanna use um, another onion that's too, will take too long to cook. Okay, get that in there. Okay, um, this is a golden beet. I just love beets and think everybody needs to eat more of them. Um, I'm gonna do this funny because I don't have a paring knife. So <laughs> I'm gonna kinda cut it like a pineapple. Um, you can leave this skin on. Uh, I'm just not going to do that because we are just giving it a quick pan sear. I'm gonna chop this in half actually. You want two big pieces that you can't fit them in your mouth. <laughs> Definitely throw in a peach in there. That's a must have for this area and this time of year. Okay. So we have corn and beans in there. We're gonna put a little squash in there as well. Um, so this is a summer squash. I'm just gonna take a section of it. To put some nice little pieces in there. So this we're going to take, we're going to put it over the fire and we're just going to saute it off for just a couple of minutes. We don't, you don't want to get them too wilted. You want that nice crunch. Um, the beets are definitely going to give you a nice crunch in there. roasted rabbit and our three sisters salad. So I'm really happy that you joined me today. I want to say a huge thank you to the Niagara Parks Commission in letting me fulfill a dream that I've had since I was a kid and being able to work in a fort kitchen. So we have that here. Um, I want to tell you to be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you've seen here today. Hit that notification bell to be the first to know of any new uploads from Chef Tanya Brave. And yeah, we're going to have a feast. Hola. Oh,